Welcome to the Future of Work podcast. We're really excited to have you here today. And I guess I'll start off our podcast today a little bit different. I'm not going to read your bio. I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I've known you since you started your company. I've known you since you were working in one country and now you're global. Uh, so uh, you had a terrific uh, path forward and uh, have probably the best data set of anybody in the flexible workspace industry. So today we'll be talking about trends and data a lot. So tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Office R&D. Thank you, Frank. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, having me here. I'm extremely excited to, uh, to have this chat. Uh, we've been uh, been chatting yeah, for, uh, for, for a long time, and uh, I'm, I'm hugely excited uh, for this conversation. A quick, a quick background on myself and Office R&D. So I'm Miro. I'm originally from Bulgaria, uh, so uh, very far. <laughs> I'm a developer. I studied computer science, uh, and I consider myself engineer uh, by heart and trait. And in 2015, I started Office R&D uh, with another Miro. Um, as we really wanted to try and solve uh, the complexity of managing a workplace uh, that's very suitable for fast changing, fast moving, dynamic companies. So we've been part of a super fast growing startup and we always felt like the office wasn't necessarily managed according to what we wanted to be um, for when things change constantly. So we decided at some point in 2015 to build a new type of workplace management system uh, that's suitable for flexible working and flexible spaces uh, in general. And ever since uh, we've been uh, quite successful, we have now more than a thousand uh, customers across the globe, servicing more than 2,500 locations around the world. Well, and those locations uh, are servicing a um, hundred to three or four or 500 clients each. So your reach is in the 50, 100,000. Uh, virtual office and, and co-working users easily. And That's I about yes. understand now with remote work becoming so important um, to larger companies and government uh, overall, that you also have begun to help larger, I'll well, say Fortune 1000 style companies uh, managing their remote work workforce, uh, utilizing the systems that you're built. Um, so as as you've done all this, and as I watched it emerge, um, um, where do you see the trends changing? Not just at the center's level, but overall in the workplace. And and give us some numbers to back up whatever your claims might be. Uh, think, wh wh where where do you see uh, the workplace moving? Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the billion dollar uh, question, I think. Literally a billion, a, a hundred billion dollar question. A hundred billion dollar question, yeah. Or even a trillion. I mean, it's uh, the, 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 the commercial real estate in the office market is so huge and vast that it's it's crazy. And and the the change that we are currently seeing is is enormous. It's scary, but at the same time, it's super exciting. So. I think we are all scared about what will happen um, with all those uh, glass towers in the in the central business district. So it's yeah, I think I think we live in an absolute uh, um, in a world uh, where things will change quite a bit uh, in the in the next uh, few years. So what we are seeing today. Uh, is that the demand for uh, true flexible spaces, so uh, co-working spaces, service offices, business centers in general, is growing, which is the opposite of what's happening in the more traditional uh, office um, real estate world, where we have we have a we obviously see um, decline in occupancy rates. Uh, in in a in the flexible world, we actually see an increase in occupancy rates. So we see more people actually adopting co-working space and flexible workspaces than ever before. Um, so at Office ID, we run something called uh, Flex Index, uh, which keeps an eye and tracks all the uh, 2,500 locations uh, we are servicing, uh, and is uh, essentially uh, becoming a benchmark of the flex space uh, industry. 
uh, at the moment, uh, we, we see that things actually recovered uh, to a point where uh, the overall index is above uh, the 2019 average, uh, which we, saw, we use as a, as a trendsetter, so pre-pandemic mm -hmm. levels. Uh, so at this stage uh, for uh, for uh, March, uh, the flex index is at uh, 5.1 points, uh, which is uh, actually uh, more uh, than than the average for uh, the entire uh, 2019, which essentially means people use more uh, flexible workspaces uh, than they did in, uh, in 2019 which is super exciting. Uh, and that's across pretty much the entire spectrum of products uh, in the flexible workspace industry. So that, that includes meeting space usage, as well as private offices, dedicated desks, hot desks, and pretty much every product there is um, in, uh, in, in a typical co-working space is now actually used more uh, than the pre-pandemic levels. Uh, which is um, hugely exciting, and we overall um, see a, a, a lot of opportunities for for the future of, of flexible work. Well, you know, um, pulling back on a little little uh, history here, um, we've been seeing uh, ourselves in in the data that we track that the overall flexible workspace industry, in terms of numbers of facilities times square footage if you will, which is what equals customer service capacity, um, have been growing uh, since uh, about 2015, since the time you started your company, at about 12% a year. Um, and that's, you say, oh, 10 to 12%, that doesn't sound like much. That's the same percentage going back into the late 90s and early 2000s that the entire PC industry grew. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fa faster than the mobile phone industry has, has grown. And there are two things I think we have to consider here when we talk about this growth, because I'm going to double it. Okay. Uh, that's the, the, the growth of the independent part of the industry, the outside part of the industry. But what we're not tracking or seeing effectively as we use that number is the number of companies <clears throat> that are internally remodeling themselves to copy or to operate in the same way as the flexible workspace industry. Yeah. Um, uh, and so the total number of people that are moving into flex is massive. Uh, and uh, if you just look at um, one major campaign, uh, it says a four day work week. We all heard of the four day work week. We, some of us like it, some of us don't. Some of us like a three day work week. Um, <laughs> uh, um, but we all know that equals 20% vacancy factor in utilization of space, yeah. conventional space that was already only used 40 to 60% efficiently. Uh, yeah. So the, the ripple effect that we're going through right now in flexibility and the absolute requirement for all companies to incorporate a high degree of flexibility in their utilization of space and their management of people to use space effectively is beyond revolutionary. Um, uh, so I, I, th I think we are, uh, <clears throat> if, if there's such a thing as a good tsunami, uh, I think we are on the crest of that, that wave uh, uh, and, and have been for the last couple of years without it really being recognized. And yet you and your company um, are able to see these patterns much more clearly than, than most. Um, right, yeah. You know, no, that's real right, Frank, actually. And then that, that gave us a really interesting, um, <laughs> at some point, uh, to, to introduce a second product, uh, because we started as a co-working space management uh, uh, company, and, and then uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, the, the tsunami, as you said, was so big and, and pretty much every company out there needed or, or ended up adopting flexible working, uh, which we call habit working or any, any, any combination of, of these. So essentially, we had the opportunity to, to get our co-working product and 
turned it into a hybrid work uh, management product and it's been hugely successful. So we have both customers on that front as well, uh, helping pretty much uh, yeah, any, any organization out there uh, that need to or want to work in a, in a, in a flexible way um, in a really similar uh, fashion to how co-working space operate. Uh, so you're right that co-working really changed the world for good uh, and, and now to a certain degree, uh, COVID accelerated that trend. Um, the adoption is is massive. I think the latest reports um, are very very clear and concise that the uh, uh, the, the approximation of, of four organizations using uh, now flexible schedules is is like seventy percent, which is yeah. enormous amount of people. <laughs> um, well, and you know, it's it's funny as we enter a. Uh... Uh, a phase of economic uncertainty. We've come out of the pandemic, more or less. Everybody would ag probably agree to that. At least economically, we've, we've left that behind us uh, as a phase. Um, but now we're in a, uh, a, a phase of both uh, geopolitical and economic uncertainty. I know you and in, in, uh, where you live in Sofia, um, you feel this very acutely, uh, what's happening uh, uh, with the war in Ukraine and, and uh, and now in Sudan, and you know you're kind of sandwiched there. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so there is an economic uncertainty and, and a political, geopolitical uncertainty that that's going on right now. How does that impact from this growth trend that you're seeing? Um, uh, does it uh, cause people to hunker down and 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 pull away, or does it cause people to get more flexible and create new ways of getting things done? I know, and I'll use, the, I'll use our own experience uh, in, in Ukraine as an example. Uh, we uh, work with a variety of technology companies that are based in, in Ukraine and have friends over there and a variety of writers, uh, content creators uh, for um, the All Work uh, uh, group um, that are there. Um, and we see them deploying all sorts of creative processes just to stay working. Just to yeah. stay working, um, you know, during during their crisis. Um, so uh, that's an acute crisis. We have um, uh, pressures from inflation. We have pressures from look at all the layoffs that all the major companies are going through, uh, et cetera. How do you see that impacting the way people will work in the future overall? Yeah, <clears throat> I'll, I'll add to to the list of uncertainty factors even another layer, which in my opinion is probably 10 times bigger uh, than everything we've seen uh, so far. <laughs> and the changes are huge <laughs> and that's AI. <laughs> so, yeah. so we are now stacking on top of, on top of overall COVID and, and the, all the changes and uncertainty that it created in the entire world, but most specifically in, in the commercial uh, real estate. Then on top, we've got a, enormous economic uncertainty and now we are having also uh ai <laughs> coming which which is i think gonna create such a massive change uh, in our societies that it's just unbelievable i think all of these trends uh lead lead us essentially to uh to to, to even the, the the need for even bigger flexibility in, in, in the workplace uh, in, and in how we work. Overall, the future of work requires another level of flexibility um, in order for, for organizations, big and small, uh, to be able to adapt uh, to, uh, to all those uh, massive changes. We're not talking about small iterative changes here. We're talking about real big big change of, of society, starting from COVID. People completely um, unwilling uh, to commute um, hours to get to the central business district. Uh, there is massive resentment, of course. I mean, um, no one wants to commute hour and a half uh, to get to a massively crowded place and, and then another hour and a half <laughs> Uh, go back home and then be completely exhausted from uh, from uh, from this commute. No one wants that, right? So <laughs> um, that's a huge change. And then 
AI is going to reshape everything and, 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 and the layoffs and economic um, uncertainty uh, that all of these are creating. So overall, I think we need, we need more, uh, more flexibility, but something also that we are very clearly seeing uh, from, uh, from both sides of our customer base, those that provide space and those that are using space is that there is a certain need of space. So people are also sick of staying home, by the way. <laughs> uh, and organizations are also realizing that working from home doesn't necessarily work from all organizations. Um, and, and most companies are moving from a completely 100% um, flexible work schedules to a more structured uh, hybrid work models where you have some patterns uh, that require people to actually uh, collaborate and be more thoughtful uh, about uh, about working together. So um, we certainly see a lot more uh, structured uh, hybrid working across the board uh, and we see a lot more organizations um, moving in, uh, in in that direction um which also as 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 i said space is a must there is a ton of research now that um companies that still get together are growing faster in a way different uh, more successful and etc so there is now real um real research uh pointing that the office or a office <laughs> uh, is is important uh, and people are productive when they spend quality time together. Uh, that doesn't mean going to the office five days a week, nine to five, whatever. Uh, I think that's dead, it's over. But it means yeah. we, uh, to be told when we need to spend time together because we can be more creative uh, together. And I think especially well, now with change in technology, uh, this will be even more important. Yes, I, 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 I agree. Um, the, um, as, we look, as we look at um, business models, there's an awful lot of discussion today about the term hybrid workplace. Um, yeah. And no one really knows what that is, but I'm, I'm going to uh, say it's, it's uh, we've all heard of digital nomads. Uh, we know that digital nomad is someone uh, going back in a little bit back in time. Uh, you take your guitar and I take my laptop and we go to Bali and I surf and you program and we're all happy, right? We're digital yes. nomads. We, we're doing gig <laughs> work. Uh, okay, that's cool. But there, there, there's a, a new term that we, we've coined uh, and I don't know, know if it'll catch on or not, but we call it lomads. Lomads. Right. Yeah. Local, yeah. local digital nomads. And yes. these are people that work in a hybrid environment, uh, what people are calling a hybrid, but, but I really think it, it's more of a nomadic environment. Um, I work from my home. Um, I'm working from my home right now, um, uh, uh, regularly. I also have an office that's about 15 minutes away where I work on occasion, once a week, yeah. every other week, mostly for meetings with people and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I got stuck yesterday in some appointments on the road. And so I was working in a coffee shop mm -hmm. I, yeah. between meetings. And I thought, well, I'll just pull in here and pull out my laptop and they have Wi-Fi. And so I was just as productive in that, that environment. And I think that local nomadism, um, work from home, work near home in an office or, or otherwise work in a central office. Uh, that nomadism is something that we are all very comfortable with these days, primarily because of the advances in technology and equipment. There's almost nowhere, there is nowhere that you can't get Wi-Fi because uh, you can create a hotspot off the 5G on your phone. So uh, mm -hmm. you, you, yep. you, have, you have access to everything you need in any sense of mobility. The one thing that you're missing, though, is the culture of your peers, your coworkers, your contacts. Uh, and you, so you have to have that as well, or you don't have a team. Uh, and okay. a team that is, uh, has a single purpose is much stronger than a whole bunch of independent individuals with the kind of sort of almost maybe 
possibly know their single purpose. With a team, you yep. can get it together. With individuals, you know, it, you still have that that influence. So, I think as we look yep. forward, we're going to see this mix up. Um, and what does that do to cities? What does that do to lifestyle? Um, considering uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we have the computer age. You probably don't remember that, but that was in the 90s and the 80s. Every, oh, we're in the middle of the computer age. Everything is terrific. Okay. And then by the mid 90s, we started having the internet age. And now mm-hmm. we're going to have the age of artificial intelligence. And in each case, computers were much, that was a 30 year adoption period. The internet was yeah. about an eight or 10 year adoption period before everything was there. And now with artificial intelligence, I think we're going to have a a much shorter adoption period um, uh, uh, overall. And how will that change the way people work in the future? Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody does. Um, But that's something that has to be considered um, for how we, when you say I need to be flexible, flexible for what? (laughs) Yeah, we have to. What do we what do we have to look for to have the flexibility for? Is it people? Is it place? Is it technology? Is it a little bit of the each of those things? What does your data tell you? Yeah, actually, we yeah, um, I can give you a clue. Uh, I think uh, it's interesting. And actually, I would love to hear um, your thoughts. So here's my question to you. So we have customers, coworking spaces uh, that have hundreds of of companies on a waiting list can you imagine where they are based in suburbs as, as a location suburbs <laughs> they're yeah. in the suburb yes yeah. so we, we, we've been, we've been, we've been saying uh, for or oh since about 2017 or 16 or 17 maybe even that you know there's the old adage in real estate location 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 We've been saying for years, no, no, no. It's timing, timing, timing. All locations are good at the right time, or all locations are bad at the wrong time. Uh, uh, so uh, when we look at that, we've been saying that you, you want to develop a new project, a new facility on a bike path, not on a metro path. Yes. That that really, and we've been saying that since about 2016 or 17. And the trending that we see uh, and have seen, not just from the pandemic, but that we were seeing beforehand, also that led us to that that strong belief. Um, and I think large large companies in the industry, such as uh, Regis, IWG Spaces, um, uh, they were um, relocating um, big percentages of their portfolio into secondary and tertiary markets uh, at that time as well. So they saw yeah. the same trending. Um, and it makes sense. It makes sense. Cities are expensive. Doesn't... Cities are dirty. Cities are crowded. Cities have crime. Why do I want to commute an hour and a half to get to all that stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah. I want. Yeah. I want to. I want to jump on my bike and 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 pedal through the, you know on a nice bike path for fifteen minutes to get to a, a, a nice nice little office where I've got three coworkers for a team meeting once a week or twice a week uh, as opposed to have to get on a train. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think AI is coming exactly at the right time <laughs> because yeah. uh, here's the story. I think overall, what what AI will uh, will will make um, and will change in the world is that people will indeed become a lot more productive, uh, and people will be able to create a lot more with a lot less. <laughs> um, so essentially, we won't need that big of a team in order to achieve and build great products. Uh, if you look at the, the the big tech companies today, they are enormous. They're huge. They're like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, and it's it's hard to to get these people together. It's hard on so many levels <laughs> to manage this. Uh, while with uh, with uh, with AI, I think. Overall, we'll be able to build products and things and, and, and new technology a lot faster and we'll need less people overall. So entrepreneurs will be extremely empowered to create awesome things 
with less. So imagine you, you live in, in Alpharetta, which is a paradise on earth <laughs> near, uh, near Atlanta. And I mean, you have a small team there, you go to your local uh, co-working space, as you said, you bike, you go buy local coffee, and everything is is nice and cute and small, and 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 you know your people and you're a team of five, ten, twenty people, and you can still create a world class, massively successful whatever product you're excited about. That'd be amazing. I mean, that'd be phenomenal. <laughs> you don't oh, have to, I, like you said, jump on the train or sit in the car for hours and 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 end up in a super crowded space and. Oh. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I I would agree with that. I, I think as we as we we start running out of a little time here, and think to it that when we look at the combination uh, of people, place, and technology, people are always equally important. Place is becoming right. less important, and technology is becoming more important. So we still have to have those three components. But the percentage and the ratios and how we use them is is changing, uh, and that's uh, something that we I think as we look towards the future of work, that's the change that we will see coming up: um, is people, place, and technology in different ratios in the future as technology becomes more important and place becomes less important. Right. Uh, yes. So, you know, uh, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing your continued success with Office R and D and and helping in every way we can, um, and um, just keep doing the good work that you've been doing. Thank you, Frank. And you, the same. Please keep doing uh, what you are doing. You've been a legend uh, in in the uh, in, in our industry and a enormous uh, enormous source of information and great insights. So please keep doing what you're doing too. <laughs> we got it. Take care, my friend. Bye bye. Bye.